Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm BJ, this is Brickhouse Builds, and we got another Buell episode for you. So in this video, we're gonna be working on more safety items, uh, going through the bike top to bottom, doing a few things that it's gonna need before it goes on the road. So stick around and enjoy. guys the Buell is back in the shop we're gonna work on it today and the main goal the main focus is to go take this thing for its maiden voyage so you saw the last video this thing went it, it went really well I rebuilt the carb kind of gave it a, a pretty basic uh, once over on the bike kind of getting an idea of what it needs so today we're gonna do a little bit of service on it and uh, try to do a couple things to make sure that it's a, a little bit more safe for the road now I do have some parts on order for it namely uh, fork seals and bushings and I also have um, I have some exhaust gaskets for it and you know of course I'm still gonna need some other parts but I have some stuff on the way and until that shows up you know I can't really I'm not gonna do the forks but I can at least work on it a little bit today and go take it for a quick little spin so anyway I'm gonna get into it I'm really excited alright so the plan of attack for today is I want to go ahead and flush out the fuel tank because we know that it has this actual bodywork paint inside, it had remnants of it. And that's what we found in the carburetor which caused it to obviously not run. Um, so I wanna address that. I'm gonna try to pull off the uh, top triple for the bars here. And I'm gonna look at the counter bores I have and I might be able to get away with uh, using a metric counter bore on this to at least get a flat surface for the, uh, for like a new, a new Allen head bolt to securely hold that, uh, that corner down. Um, I'm going to flush the brakes front and back and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and obviously I need to kind of like hold some stuff up here, <laughs> get, get everything kind of bolted back up because we are going to be using this seat and tail for right now. I also, you guys are awesome, the Buell community has been awesome since I put up that first video. Got hit up, I had somebody who had the, uh, the original parts, uh, parts manuals here. And then uh, as of today, or as of yesterday, the guy who I got this from actually had the factory service manual. So awesome stuff. He also had the stock mirrors and at least two of the stock turn signals, which is, which is awesome again. Um, but yeah, I'm going to also be looking at the shifters, the shifter and the pegs basically. So I've been doing as, you know, as much reading as I can on, on, on some of these bikes. And obviously this is called the boomerang shifter, which not a lot of people, I guess are a fan of. And I know later in 2000, these things got an upgrade still hard to find those components in general i don't really want to buy the full upgraded version because it's just you know it's a lot more expensive um but i was looking for the replacement bushings for the shifter side here now from my reading like american sport bike and some other places had like a bronze upgrade for these things but american sport bike is no longer uh in business i guess at least the website doesn't work so unfortunately that's not an option there and I can't seem to track down the factory part number, I mean the, uh, the factory parts for these things, the factory bushings, because they were obsolete. Now I know Twin Cycles over in like Europe or something, they have a nice bronze upgrade for these, but you know, if I can avoid $50, paying $50 for like a $9 part, I'd like to do that. So if you guys have any recommendations on where I could find like a bronze upgrade replacement for these, let me know in the comments, that would be really awesome. Uh, I do plan to, I'm going to replace fuel lines, put an inline fuel filter on it. We're going to make a new ground strap for the battery, oil change, uh, secure the exhaust, probably pick, take off, probably take off the original uh, passenger pegs, and see if I can address what's going on here. The whole peg is, I don't know, I don't know what to do with this right now, but that's another one we need bushings for. So it makes me kind of tempted to... I don't know, kind of retrofit an entire set of rear sets on this thing for uh, like a custom application. Because I got two nice mounting tabs there and I can, you know, I can TIG and fabricate and make all the linkage for this thing. So it's definitely an option. But anyway, for now, I'm going to go ahead and raise this thing up, 
start cleaning it, maybe flush brakes. Uh, I'd like to power wash it, we're just gonna get to work. a little update back here I have just kind of undone everything there was uh, the, the fuse box is zip tied right by the belt and then we had a few other things just kind of held over here since they were trying to clean this area up for that original for that seat that was on it um, I'm just gonna put it all back in the factory spot since we're using the factory tail and uh, as of now I just have it kind of like uh, bungee corded up here out of the way because I'm planning on power washing this thing and uh, just knock some of this grime off that's normal for any bike. The foot peg itself, I'm not sure what I can do with it right now. Um, it works, I'd be afraid to mess with it right now, so I'm just gonna keep looking for bushings and stuff like that. But anyway, pulled the, uh, you know, their uh, license plate bracket off, and then the tail light that was on, it's a run turn brake. Uh, it's a run turn brake light. I know it works, so I might rewire it, and I think I might even try retrofitting it where that light goes uh, I'm not sure yet so that would keep me from having to put turn signals in the back of the bike and just help it be clean plus we have it so because we have it I'd like to use it uh, back over here nothing really major to report uh, one update I want to do with the exhaust here uh, my plan is instead of buying like a system or a factory part what I'm gonna do is get some uh, I guess that's two and a half inch pipe I will if that's, I doubt that's stainless actually now that I look at it, but so we'll make, uh, we'll make a couple pieces here, maybe get a couple bends in it to get the angle right, but I want to put a cone engineering muffler on it. I use them on a lot of builds. I know that would sound incredible on this thing, so we'll have it kind of kicked out and then maybe the exit, the exit about right here, you know, because obviously we can't really interfere with the, uh, the kickstand. That's going to be our biggest concern, but that's going to be what I plan on doing. And I'll utilize, I don't know if this is a factory mount or not, it's hard to tell. This is TIG welded and stuff, but I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with something, uh, a hanger down here, and get that muffler on there. So that's going to be maybe a little bit down the road. We'll see how it goes. So as of now, I'm going to lower this thing down a little bit, and I will start addressing some things up here. Just went ahead and pulled these things off, and I'm assuming that they're load resistors. They have a six ohm stamping on them. So that's probably what they are because it has uh, LED signals on it front and back right now. And it uh, looks like it has the stock turn signal relay. So I'm thinking maybe I can uh, go ahead and if, if I can reuse these turn signals, cool. Um, I can put the front ones on, no problem, but I can always mix it with a uh, like an LED or incandescent bulb compatible um, turn signal flasher relay. So. I don't know, I might be able to just get rid of these, clean up the wiring even further. But they were going to have to come off anyway. Uh, they're zip tied to the fork, and obviously I'm going to be rebuilding the forks. Not in this video, but whenever I get those parts. And, uh, you know, they'll come off anyway. So I just went and pulled the bars off so I could access that, that stud there. I'm planning on uh, just using the TIG and welding a nut to that. And hopefully the, the heat from the TIG will just expand that aluminum a little bit more and, and give me a better chance of getting that thing out. But the upper bar clamp, kind of roached in every hole. They took a drill to it and it's just pretty chewed up and then it's getting real thin in some areas. So I'm definitely going to have to look at replacing this, unfortunately. So uh, it is what it is, kind of sucks, but you know, if there's ever an instance that I can try to use my counter bores and square these holes up right now would be that time. It's not like I can mess it up further, but I would feel much more confident, obviously, having four bolts holding the bars on versus three. 
Uh, so I'll check this up in my uh, drill press and see if I can get see if I can get my counter bore in here and square them up at least. But uh, next up, you know, I will go ahead and try to work on getting that that stud out. All right, so this is not obviously the most ideal fix, but it's something I can try to help at least make me feel more comfortable with this. But this is an M8 uh, counter bore that I have. I, I do all metric stuff, so I don't have the uh, the right counter bore, but also thought about using a Forstner bit because it's square at the bottom. But this will help, hopefully help keep itself centered. We have it clamped. I'm gonna use a little cutting oil and uh, see how it goes. square. All right, we at least have a flat surface in here. I feel much better about that. So it's not perfect, but it's a, a hell of a lot better than it was. I might put this back in here and then uh, just take it down a little bit further. Yeah. It would be nice to have the right right size counter bore, but let me tell you, this is miles better. So I'm gonna do the other three. All right, so I got all these squared up. Uh, as much as I'm willing to go, I wanna take off as minimal material as possible. Uh, so there's two of them that have like just a little bit of a chamfer on like this much of the hole. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just take uh, one of my porting bits here kind of square off any edges and just uh, I'll try to at least put some washers in here to help distribute that load from the bolt itself and I'll feel more I'll feel far more comfortable with that uh, than how it was so at least we got it a little bit squared up and then that pressure from the bolt head will you know at least be equally applied throughout the clamp I think it was actually warped uh, already because it wouldn't you know it wouldn't sit to completely flush in my uh, in my little mount there which wouldn't surprise me. So, anyway, back to it. So what I've done here is I've at least just kind of squared off the edges and made sure everything is just flat in here. And uh, I did find some washers at work. These are just like some random black chrome like AN washers or something. And they do fit. They will fit. I should say that. They will fit. <laughs> this will at least help me get, you know, the load kind of distributed within these. So anyway, I can always... Take a little bit of material just off the edge there and let them sit down flush. But I'll feel a lot better about that. But that's the plan thus far. Plus, I also got some longer bolts. There was only about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch of thread engagement into the triple, and these are a quarter inch longer, so I'll feel better about that. So we're just kind of getting set up here, and I decided since there's not a whole lot of material uh, sticking up here, that would kind of decrease my chances of welding a nut to it. So I just took a piece of, uh, I don't know, like three quarter inch by one eighth steel, cut a, or drilled a five sixteenths hole in there. And I'm going to lay it flush on here, clock this way, and then we'll just TIG a nice bead onto there. And then I can, you know, put leverage on this thing and hopefully crank it out. And then by the time it needs to come around, I can clear the other parts of the triple. So. Sounds good in explanation. We'll see how well it gets executed, though. All right, that welded really nicely actually, so I'm gonna let it cool for just uh, a few minutes here before I try to put any pressure on it. 
and hopefully we will extract the bolt. All right, let's see if we can let's see if we can crack this thing loose. So I'm gonna get uh, some kind of cheater here, and we'll go from there. Cross your fingers. Come on. I'm gonna put a little bit more heat down here. And by a little, I mean maybe a little bit more than a little. Actually, I think, oh yeah. So they've tried drilling this one, I can tell. Now that's the top of a tap. That thing must be in here good. Hmm. Time to reassess. All right, well, I obviously gave up with that method. Tried it four times. I thought I got it to move briefly, but as of now, I just went ahead and pulled the triple off. And I'm gonna do this kind of the traditional way. So drilling out the uh, the bolt that's in there and then we'll just do an easy out. So hopefully uh, hopefully it was drilled and I can get it, get, it really, uh, get, it, get it really straight in there and then we can just increase that size until there's just barely anything left and then I can pick it out from there. But we will prevail, I will beat this thing. Right, that's part of it. This is from the last time I tried to get it out with the welder. When it spun, it kind of chewed up that teeny tiny little part of aluminum there. Oh, getting so close. Hey guys, so I apologize here. The audio got screwed up on this clip, but I prevailed. I got that triple done and what it ended up finding was that all of the holes actually were drilled and tapped for a larger size bolt and that would make sense for why the uh, the triple clamp here was actually opened up for, to accept the larger bolt head but basically uh, you know it just took me a long time to uh, actually kind of chisel out the last little pieces of the bolt that were in there after getting it drilled and uh, extracted as you saw it just took a long time and then that combined with the freaking weather outside being, you know, big, big storm. Um, I ended up calling it a quits for trying to ride the bike in this video. So what I want to do in this video is actually just uh, go ahead and do a bunch of work to it, showcase that, and then the next video you guys are going to see is just going to be pure riding. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. So, you know, again, I, I, I apologize for the audio in this one, but uh, yeah, stick with me here and uh, we're going to make this a fun project. I got a lot more stuff to show you. All right, so one other thing I'm doing to the bike, uh, obviously I'm putting on these turn signals here and I don't have the factory uh, Harley or Buell uh, bullet connector, so I'm just using some, some Japanese type uh, 3.5 mil. I have a bunch of, bunch of different wiring stuff in stock. So uh, just putting the stock turn signals back on and then I'm also taking some of the leads, so like the factory turn signal harness here, just uh, had a cheap piece, of, cheap piece of like vinyl tubing over it. So I went ahead and it put some uh, adhesive line heat shrink on each of the wires and then kind of sealed the end a little bit just so it doesn't draw water straight into the harness back there and I know it's not like the whole thing sealed but you know I'm picky and just one more step to uh, kind of make it make it foolproof so anyway I'm gonna get these things on I'll put the headlight back on and as you can see we've got the bars on we've got the gauges on we're gonna wheel this thing outside power wash it 
bring it back in, and then leave the brakes, and a couple other things, and we'll go for a ride. Okay, so to recap, at this point we got this thing washed. I have the electronics in the back remounted how they should be, or at least how I think they should be. They fit really well. Um, I went ahead and I've already bled the rear brakes, just flushed that fluid out, pushed the piston in, made sure it went back out, everything returns, it all operates smooth. And so now it's time to go ahead and move to the front. So I'm going to just uh, push out as much fluid as I can, then before it runs dry, throw some new fluid in. We'll just make sure that the front brakes work just as well as the rear. Fluid's not not terrible, but it's definitely not good. Feels good. All right, put this on, then I'm gonna take the lever off, straighten this thing out, put a little bit of grease on it because it's annoying. Well, I'm taking a look at the tail for this thing and it just has a simple plastic, uh, plastic piece kind of adhered on, hanging down there. And then it has the stock, I guess this is the Undertale license plate mount originally, but it's been cut down. I went ahead and just shaved it further. And then I had a couple of these lights that came on the bike and they are actually uh, run, brake, and turn, which is pretty cool. So instead of me trying to source some other turn signals to put on the back of the bike and make it clean looking, I think I'm just going to put this on here. So that, with a couple holes drilled, will fit right in there. We're just going to put it offset right now so it sits in here. And then that will sit in there like that. So. I don't see why that wouldn't work. And then on this, on the bottom side of this particular light, it has a license plate light, so I can just build a bracket off the bottom and just make a, make a license plate bracket. Super easy. So I think all I'm gonna do is, since the holes would be right in between these two holes, if you can see that, right in between those two holes, I'll just drill a hole there, drill a hole there, and then just do a, a piece of metal on the back side, sandwiched on here, and that'll just be like an added brace. And then we'll wire it up. Super simple. Zero dollars. I like that. All right, I got my holes drilled in both pieces. And being that this piece is a lot thicker, and I'd be doubling it up, I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and avoid making another bracket for the rear. I'll just put a washer on the back, and we should be safe on that. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's gonna fit over like that. That right there. Went ahead, tested the light, confirmed which ways, left, right, brake, that, that kind of thing. And uh, all I gotta do is match up the wire code on the Buell harness and we'll be good to go. So let's get this on here. Just like so. That'll be a little hidden, but don't worry. I do plan to modify this tail and I will, I'll trim that. We'll make kind of like a little spoiler, it'll be cool looking. We'll trim that and make it look all right, but not bad for zero dollars. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put a washer on the inside, tighten that down, and then we'll have our wire harness to uh, go ahead and extend. All right, 
right, so we're in the home stretch. You saw I went ahead and I got the tail light all modified. I have um, I have some 210 style connectors on this thing. I would rather have like a Deutschworks or something something waterproof, but I don't have any on hand. At least uh, you know five or six pin. So this will work for now. I can always redo it in the future. But uh, I went ahead. I put in the battery. I put zip ties back on this thing because I'm going to actually get a, a dedicated mount for it um, or a bracket. And as of now, the fuel just stopped draining, but the fuel was draining out of the tank. It was green in color because of all the paint. But I'm gonna go ahead and slosh that thing around, get it cleaned up, throw some fuel in it, put the tank on, put the tail on, put the seat on. We're gonna go ride this thing. Home stretch, man. Right, so we just took this thing around the block one time not kidding got pulled over immediately i made it up the street pulled over cop was cool though just uh you know obviously i'm running this thing without a plate and i didn't have the mirror adjusted i had no idea he was behind me so he was like is this guy running from me but no he was cool but anyway first shakedown i think i got the steering the head bearings a little too tight uh just feels a little a little awkward but you know i didn't really check it when it was on the ground I just tighten it up and just hope that it was gonna be good but I know the type for now um, I put my tail light on backwards or upside down I should say so my right blinker was my left blinker and left right so anyway got to just undo that flip it over and yeah we're gonna get there though um, I feel like the I guess it would be the rebound settings on the rear shock just feel weird now I've never ridden one of these things so I don't know what they should feel like but just felt maybe like a little bit bouncy off the throttle you know again i rode this thing very little run block twice didn't even bother taking the camera so um yeah maybe tomorrow this week sometime i'm going to do a lot more riding of it uh i'm gonna go ahead and change the fluids real quick and probably be good to go so just gonna be tinkering with it I'm gonna evolve it and make it make it awesome Ooh, That's black. So I went ahead and drained the primary too, and a little less, definitely less than a quart came out. So that's a little concerning. A lot better color than this. Wow. All right. So I know I started this video out hoping that we would go for a longer, more extended ride or something like that on in this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this thing right do a few little things that you guys know all know how to do and then we're gonna go for a nice ride I'll do helmet cam I'll have good audio and that'll be in the next video if you have any questions let me know check me out on social media and definitely subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah there's definitely gonna be some more Buell content along with everything else so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching